A very warm welcome to our service this morning. I'm going to start with a, a reading from Malachi. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. And that's Malachi chapter 1, verse 11. I don't know about you, but one thing that I am missing is the song before our service starts. I, I miss that quiet time of reflection and preparation or of prayer. So I thought, ring the changes this morning. We'll have a song at this point, just to help clear our minds as we pre prepare to worship our risen saviour this morning. This one may be new to you, or it may be one that you're familiar with. It's Great Are You, Lord, and this version's by Casting Crowns. So if you want to stop the video at this point, go back to the website and use the link there. I'll see you after our preparation song. Well, welcome back. Should we start our service this morning? by opening in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise your name, knowing you are worthy of more prayers and praises than we could ever offer. Although our praises can never be enough, accept them in Jesus' name. You have said that even if our sins are as red as crimson, you would make them as white as snow again. We are sinners who have gathered at your throne of mercy to enjoy fellowship with you. Bring us closer in unity to your love and grace. Help us to share your love and grace with those we meet. Let everything that we do today and every day be done in your name. Amen. Recognizing those times when we fall short, shall we join together in the confession? Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. As we can read in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. Again, if you'd like to pause the service video at this point, go back to the order of service on the website and use the link there for our opening song of praise, I Will Worship. Well, welcome back. I'm now going to hand over to Mark to bring us our reading for this morning and his reflection on the passage. Mark. Thank you, Mike. Well, good morning to you. Uh, our reading this morning is taken from Acts chapter 10 and verses 23 to 48. On the next day, he got up and set out with them. And some of the brothers from Joppa accompanied him. The following day, he entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was waiting anxiously for them and had called together his relatives and close friends. So when Peter came in, Cornelius met him, fell at his feet, and worshipped him. But Peter helped him up, saying, Stand up, I too am a mere mortal. Peter continued talking with him as he went in, and he found many people gathered together. He said to them, you know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. Yet God has shown me that I should call no person defiled 
or ritually unclean. Therefore, when you sent for me, I came without any objection. Now may I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius replied, four days ago at this very hour, at three o'clock in the afternoon, I was praying in my house. And suddenly a man in shining clothing stood before me and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your acts of charity have been remembered before God. Therefore, send to Joppa and summon Simon who is called Peter. This man is staying as a guest in the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea. Therefore I sent for you at once, and you were kind enough to come. So now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to say to us. Then Peter started speaking. Now I truly understand that God does not show favoritism in dealing with people. But in every nation, the person who fears him and does what is right is welcomed before him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John announced. With respect to Jesus from Nazareth, that God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of all the things he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him up on the third day and caused him to be seen, not by all the people, but by us, the witnesses God had already chosen, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to warn them that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. About him all the prophets testify that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were greatly astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, No one can withhold the water for these people to be baptised, who have received the Holy Spirit just as we did, can he? So he gave orders to have them baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before I begin, let's pray. Gracious God, just as you caused your Holy Spirit to fall on those Gentile believers, those ones who'd come asking for Peter. Now, Lord, we ask that you'd fall upon us. Give us your Holy Spirit to understand your word and be filled afresh with your power from on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know if you remember that time uh, at school. Some of you might have a few years to remember back. Um, and that time when maybe you were lined up in PE or just during playtime. And 
there were two teams sorted out with captains and they started to pick people and you hoped that you'd be picked on the team and you stood there waiting waiting and you realized that the captain picked his favorites and you weren't one of them or maybe the PE teacher picked their favorite the ones who were good at sport and you waited and you waited you know favoritism can be seen in many different ways not just in the playground or in the PE lesson but we see favoritism in places of work favoritism in society in general even in churches i remember reading recently about a politician who always picked their friends in government yes favoritism is rife we continue looking at this wonderful passage in acts chapter 10 and this remarkable story of the conversion of Cornelius and how the gospel broke out of its Jewish roots and went into the Gentile world and of course eventually to us. In Romans chapter 2 verse 11 we read that God does not show favouritism and our passage here in Acts 10 shows us this. We see that God wanted to create a new family both Jews and Gentiles. We read in Ephesians 2, these words from the Apostle Paul. He says, Christ himself is our peace. He has made Jews and non-Jews one group of people. He's destroyed the hatred that was like a wall between us. Through his body on the cross, Christ put an end to the law with all its commands and rules because he wanted to create one new group of people out of the two. He wanted to make peace between them. What a wonderful passage. Walls of hostility coming down and people being united. Now in this passage in Acts 10, I think there are three truths that show us that God has no favourites. The first of all can be found in verse 34 and 35. It tells us that God accepts all who fear him and do what is right. The Jews had the idea of being God's chosen people. And they were. But they had made it into a doctrine of favoritism, that God liked them more than others. The text we started the service with last week from Genesis 12 says that God blessed Abraham in order that he might be a blessing to all people, not just his family. And of course, entry into the family of God is through Jesus Christ. But the invitation is open to everyone. So the first truth I see in this passage is that God accepts all. He has no favourites. The second thing I see in verse 36 is that Jesus is Lord of all. Peter had to come to realise that Jesus was not simply Lord of the Jews, but Lord of all. You know, Peter's vision of God, as it were, had been too small. And his vision of God's mission had been distorted by his Jewishness, his racial prejudice. You see, Jesus is not only the Jewish Messiah, he is the Lord and Saviour for the whole world. So our first truth is that God accepts all who fear him and do what is right. Secondly, Jesus is Lord of all. That includes the whole known world, the universe in fact, as we read in Colossians 1. 
And thirdly, salvation is available to all, as we read in verse 43. The prophets testify to the Messiah that everyone who believes in him receives a forgiveness of sins through his name. In other words, forgiveness doesn't come by any other means apart from through Jesus. Salvation is available to all who come to him who is Lord of all. The word here that is used, the word everyone, crashes through the barriers of race, race and ethnicity. Everyone can be forgiven. Salvation is available to all. So we have these three truths here that Peter preached. We have that God accepts all. Jesus is Lord of all. And salvation is available to all. But now... With these three truths come three remarkable events. And then following that, we have three things that we can look at of how we can apply what we've learned today. The three events that came here in Acts chapter 10 was the giving of the Holy Spirit. Peter's preaching was interrupted by the Spirit who descended on all who were listening to the message. I love that, the fact that God had his own agenda. Yes, Peter was preaching, but the Holy Spirit came and interrupted. I love that. And the Holy Spirit descended upon Cornelius and his guests as they listened to Peter. And the small group of Jewish believers that had traveled with Peter were astonished that the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles just as it had been given to them earlier on the day of Pentecost. This was a visual demonstration that the gospel of Jesus Christ was for all, Gentiles as well as Jews. So the first event that we see is the coming of the Holy Spirit. The second event is baptism. We see that in verse 47, where Peter says, Can anyone keep these people from being baptised with water? They have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Peter wanted his fellow Jews to see that these Gentiles were no longer outsiders, but were now members of the same family. Baptism was a mark of family membership for Jew and Gentile alike. And the third visual aid we have here is fellowship. Right at the end of the passage, it says, and they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Peter stayed and ate with them, taught them, spent time with them, no doubt prayed with them. No longer did the division between Jew and Gentile matter. Prejudice and suspicion began to fall. They were now part of one holy family, Jew and Gentile, formed by the Holy Spirit and founded on their belief in Jesus Christ. The gospel crosses boundaries. Acts 10 is about barriers being broken and God creating a new family from diverse backgrounds. So we have three truths. We have three events. Now three implications of this passage. The first is how we see other people. We are to learn to see people as God sees them. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5.16, from now on we regard no one 
from a worldly point of view. In other words, we don't judge people by the standards of this world, how they look, by their ethnicity, by their background, their education, their image, their nationality or culture. All people are made in God's image and all people are people for whom Christ died. Every single person on this planet is a potential brother or sister in Christ. So the question is, how do we see other people? How do you see them? Remember, God has no favourites. The first implication of this passage is how we look at other people. The second is how we view our mission. If God accepts all, if Jesus is Lord of all, and if salvation is available to all, then our mission is to let people know these truths. Well, how do we do this? Well, I know at this time of coronavirus, it's difficult, but maybe a good starting point is a socially distanced chat or an act of service, such as collecting someone's shopping. More than ever in our society, there are many people who've never heard the gospel of peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. And for many, they need to see first our faith demonstrated in action. That's why we do what we do, to show that there is hope in Jesus. Remember, God has no favourites. So, our first implication is how we see other people, then how we see our mission, and thirdly, how we pray. The mission that we are tasked with calls us to pray. Many years ago, I was at a missionary conference in the Netherlands. This was back in the 80s. And all the several hundred delegates were placed into small groups and given a country to pray for. In the small group that I was in, we were asked to pray for Bolivia. To be honest, I didn't yet at that point know where Bolivia was. But I discovered it was in South America. And so began a lifetime of prayer for that nation. The global vision of the gospel reaching out to the farthest ends of the earth, which may begin with our next door neighbour. It requires us to pray. But if you want to pray for the world, but don't know what to pray, well, can I make a suggestion? If you have a smartphone and can download an app, can I suggest you download the Operation World app on your phone? Today we're praying for Hungary, the nation of Hungary, that's had a thousand years of the Christian faith, and yet increasingly, church attendance has gone down dramatically in the last few decades and secularism has gone is rife throughout that country if you can pray for a pastor there who's a friend of mine Shandor Kereshkenyi and his wife Livia and their son Mate if you can pray for him and others like him who need our prayers at this time in Hungary. Now, if you can't download the app onto your phone, maybe you can go to the website, operationworld.org. And if you can't do that, well, Operation World still publish a book. And you can get that book, which has every country in the world that you can pray for, and gives you things that you can pray for. It's succinct and very useful. I've used that for many years. I got rid of the book because it's a very large book and it's really helpful to have it on my phone. 
But maybe there are countries that are on your heart to pray for regularly. I know that we as a church pray regularly for certain countries. We pray for Turkey. We pray for India with Bishop Raj and Pastor Gladson, and also Pastor Sam in the orphanage. But there are others too that we have prayed for around the world over the years. Our prayers are valuable. So one implication of this passage in Acts chapter 10 is that we pray for the nations, not just our own community, but around the world. Here is a time when Jew and Gentile were united in one family. But we need to pray for the world at this time. In a world where you know, this pandemic is across the world, that's why it's called a pandemic. We need to pray for the gospel to be spread for people to be, have ears to hear it, just as Cornelius did. So, we've seen three truths. God accepts all. Jesus is Lord of all. And salvation is available to all. We've seen three visual aids of this. That the Holy Spirit was given to the Gentiles that they were baptised and brought into the family of God. And then they fed, shared fellowship with one another, Jew and Gentile. And we've seen three implications for us. How we see other people, how we view our mission, and how we pray. Remembering in all of this, that God has no favourites. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for our salvation in Christ, that someone somewhere shared the good news of Jesus with us. Help us never to discriminate against others or show favouritism but know that you are the God who has no favourites, that you love all and welcome all into your family. Lord, help us to show love wherever we go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now I'm going to hand back to Mike. Um, the Lord bless you now, and I pray that you will see signs of the gospel spreading. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Shall we continue in prayer? Lord, we pray for those you have called to take your message out to others, either locally or globally. Lord, strengthen each one of us to be better at sharing your love and grace with others. We pray for those you have placed in oversight of the family of believers at this difficult time. May they know and feel your closeness. We pray for our leaders, our political leaders around the globe, that ways can be found to recognize our connectedness, that ways can be found to share your bounty more fairly. Lord, we just ask that you would break down the barriers mankind erects to benefit the few at the expense of the many. And we thank you that our own government has eventually done the right thing, extending the school meal vouchers over the summer holidays. And Lord, just be with each one of us. Help us not to erect barriers between ourselves and those who are different to us. Or well, we're still barriers between you and others who are different to us. We worship one God. Let us be united as your one creation. We lift before you those who strive to find a vaccine and a treatment for the coronavirus pandemic. Direct their studies and work so that mankind might be freed of the worry of this pandemic. 
We pray for those who have ill health at this time. Lord, place your healing hand upon them. Restore them to health and fellowship. In particular, we lift before you, Jason, and we pray for his speedy recovery from surgery, Lord. Lord, we pray for all communities facing the uncertainty and worry of the release of the lockdown. Help each one of us to do the right thing, to have patience as the guidance changes, to have patience as we queue for shopping, to have patience with those we live with and with those we love. We lift before you parents who are uncertain about sending children back to school to give them a sense of direction and the peace of mind in their decisions. For those going back to work and the uncertainty they face, mixing with others perhaps for the first time in many months. Lord, may we never lose sight of the promises you gave us promises that you have plans to prosper us, not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. Lord, into your hands we commit our future, knowing we are safe in your hands and that nothing can snatch us away from you. Amen. Shall we join together in the prayer our Saviour taught us? Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So if you'd like to pause the service again and go back to the website and open our closing song, we can join together in its singing, or if you prefer, simply listen to it. This is the days of Elijah. Welcome back. Lord God Almighty, thank you for the time we have spent in your presence this morning. We have sung, prayed, and listened to your word. Lord, we don't take these services for granted, not least because of the pandemic, but also because we know that believers in some parts of the world are being persecuted and discriminated against right now. We've had a wonderful time, and we want to thank you for filling our homes with joy and peace. As we close our service, we ask you, Lord, to walk with us Go everywhere we go. Be ahead of us, above us, behind us and beside us. Help us to keep your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To so go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I thought I'd touched on the feeling that some had expressed that they may have been losing their way a little bit. And I know there are times that we, that we all feel that way. But let us not forget that Christ goes before us, making the way for us. He is our way maker. And you've now got three options, a short, a medium, and a slightly longer version of the Waymaker song. God bless you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord until we meet together again. And hopefully Mark and I will see some of you for coffee, virtual coffee, admittedly, but we'll see you for coffee after the service. Bye for now.